Hello folks, I'm Ed Overstreet and welcome to the Night Sky Imaging YouTube channel. Today we are going to be looking at a new process, which isn't new, uh, but uh, it's a process that you can use for reducing the size of your star stars and it, and it also uh, reduces the number of your stars just depending on how aggressive you get with the tool. It happens to be free. It was created by Bill Blanchon, and I will put a link to the processes that you'll need to download. Um, now, you have to be a site user, but the link will be on the YouTube channel. So, uh, if you're using PixInsight, uh, download these processes, uh, merge them into your process icons if you happen to use uh, your icons over and over again and uh, you can have a lot of fun with it. So uh, let's get started and uh, let's take a look at it and see uh, how it works. Okay, I am over in PixInsight, and as you can see, I'm starting with a blank screen. I have not uh, yet gone to process, process icons, and I haven't loaded my process icons yet. Uh, I'm going to first uh, download Bill's uh, new processes, and uh, then I'm going to merge them with uh, the ones I've already created. So um, let's go over it to where he has saved those. He's using an Amazon Drive. And uh, if you click on the link underneath uh, my name in the YouTube channel, you'll see uh, this video. And uh, you'll see this come up. Just click on Bill's Reduction Method and go to the upper right-hand corner here. Click Download. And I'm going to download this to process icons where I save my other process icons and uh, so it's about done and it is done so let's move back into PixInsight <clears throat> and now I'm going to go to process uh, process icons load process icons and I'm going to navigate to where I saved them and we're going to load them, and here they are. Uh, there's, uh, well, let's put it back here. So we have uh, three different processes. Let me arrange them. Uh, okay, so we have three different uh, star reduction processes, and uh, let's take a look at. Uh, and how they're going to work. So first, <clears throat> let me, um, I want to load my other process icons, and if I do, then these are going to go away. So uh, I think, but it doesn't matter. I want to go to process icons. I'm going to go down to process icons, and I'm going to select merge. And then I'm going to go find the process icons that I use. Bills are already on my Picks Insight page, and I'm going to load my process icon. So, as you can see, they're right. I already have them saved. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and delete these as I already have them. Uh, I've been using them for uh, some time, and uh, so there they are. Now, let's load an image and take a look at how they work. And uh, this horse head will work. Oh, that's the starless version. I want the, uh, I don't know if I saved it. Let's see, no, horse head tiff. Actually, let's just load the project. <coughs> And uh, uh, pick the wrong thing. Pix Insight file, uh, load project, and let's go to projects. There it is, and let's just load that. 
okay we have the project open and uh, and this was taken uh, actually this was taken back I think in February and the uh, stars are uh, large and kind of bloated and uh, I took this with a Smith Cassegrain uh, 8 inch and so what I want to do is if I can is to reduce the size of the stars using their process so um, first thing you do is you can do one of two things. You can either make a clone and you have to call this clone or you need to call this clone starless to make it easy. Starless. Or you don't have to do that. Uh, in fact, let me delete this. You can just, uh, uh, by the way, let me just move these out here so you can see them. You can just take clone for starless and drop that here and it creates a clone for you and it already names it for you. So Bill's made it very easy. So you can either clone and rename it starless or just use clone for starless. And that's what this icon is for. So let's move this back. Now, <clears throat> the next thing you have to do is open this starless version and not to confuse things, I'm going to minimize the other one, the main one, and we're going to have to remove the stars. And you can use Star Exterminator or StarNet 1 or StarNet 2, uh, but I'm going to use Star Exterminator. And I have everything unchecked. This is in the nonlinear mode, and uh, I don't want the stars. I just uh, want the uh, uh, starless version, so I'm going to uh, drag this on top and let it run, and it's going to remove the stars and leave me with a nebula. All right, we got uh, our starless version, and I'm going to minimize it. You don't have to have it open, and uh, I'm going to return to my image I want to fix the stars on. And let's try version, there's three versions. Uh, let's try version one first. Now these are pixel math expressions. And here are the pixel max math equations that does the magic. <clears throat> you don't make any changes to this. You don't need to make any changes. Um, I don't know enough about the, the complexities of this to even know what to do with it other than what Bill suggests. Um, if you make a, if you, well, I'll just show you, it's easier. I'm going to drag this on top of my stars and watch the magic happen. Okay, that's uh, before and after. Before and after. <clears throat> before and after. So one reason why you have to name starless is because it uses the word starless uh, as the reference and it's using this uh, in the equation to come up with the stars. Now if you want the stars to be smaller you can reduce this to say 10 And that's what happens. They become smaller. So before, after, before, after. But one of the side effects of reducing these stars, it makes some of them go away. And I don't want it to do that. I want to make it smaller. So I'm going to experiment with, let's go back to, uh, let's say, 13. I have found going lower than 10, uh, maybe that's a little better. But the problem I have when I'm using the Smith Cassegrain is that it's an F10 scope. And so it does require uh, longer exposures with that uh, aperture. And so the stars almost always get blown out. And the only way I've been able to 
to, to deal with that in the past is to shoot the star separately before I shoot the, uh, uh, the target. And I just focus on the stars and I'll take RGB, say five, six, seven, maybe 10 second RGBs. And then I process those. And I used to just layer them back in in Photoshop, but now with uh, star removal programs like StarNet2 and Star Exterminator, uh, you can extract the stars and uh, and use those stars from your RGB uh, uh, low exposure images, and then, and then just uh, uh, add those back to your uh, target after you've processed it. So, but uh, with start with this particular approach that uh, Bill Blanchin is using. Uh, you can really make some cool modifications to your stars and uh, as you see here so let's go back to before and uh, let's close this out and let's look, look at version 2 which is very very similar but it adds a, a level of strength to it and all you can do is play around with it to see for yourself so we're going to leave it at the default 0.15 and let's drag and drop And we're almost there, and we're there. And uh, this uh, at 15 really, uh, it, it almost does the same as, as the first version at uh, 10, at 0 0.10. But if you go down to say 0 0.10 here, you're almost starless. And let's go back to where we were. And let's try 0 0.10. I will tell you what my favorite one is so far. And that's the third. So we have uh, removed a number of stars at 0.10. We've removed the size of the bloated stars significantly. So pretty impressive. And thank you, Bill, for developing this. So let's close this one out. And let's try this one now. Uh, it again, if it's in red, you can change it. This means I equals one is iteration. It's going to run it one time. If you put a two there, it'll run the same process twice, and so you'll have more reduction. And if you put a three, it's going to run it three times. It won't run it there. If you put four in, it won't happen. Um, then under one, it's a strong, well, you, it tells you out here, method one, one is a strong removal, then moderate, and then soft reduction. Well, I kind of like one and two, but I've tried them all. And you can have fun doing this. So let's give this a whirl. <clears throat> While I'm waiting for this to happen, uh, if I've complicated this to the point where you're having a problem um, understanding it, uh, Sean Nielsen has a great video on it where he brings Bill Blanchin on his site, and Bill explains how he developed it and kind of what's under the hood, and, uh, and, it, and it's really good. Okay, uh, as you can see, my stars are about the size uh, the larger ones uh, as it was in version one, but I haven't lost all the smaller stars. They are tighter, but they're not, they haven't disappeared. So uh, play around with this and uh, I, you'll have a lot of fun, particularly where you've had long focal length telescopes that have these bilious looking bloated stars and sometimes they're uh, not shaped right and uh, this even kind of helps to uh, I don't know if it's a, a an illusion or not but even my uh, not so round stars are uh, improved significantly uh, using his pixel math stretching of the stars so I love it
and thank you again, Bill, for doing this. Uh, give it a try. Remember the uh, Bill Blanch and, uh, download page has been added to the uh, to my YouTube channel. Just look for it uh, and there, and you download them. Give it an install, uh, merge it with your process icons, and have some fun working on images you've taken in the past. Catch you later. Don't forget to subscribe and like the channel if you do. Um, if you don't, don't tell me because it hurts my feelings. And uh, anyway, I don't want my feelings hurt. Y'all have a great day. Like you.